Welcome back, friends. We have an exciting video this week because we're going to be talking about accounting ratios. If you work in accounting or corporate finance, you need to know about accounting ratios. So you should be able to understand them and to speak intelligently about them because they are very useful in business. Let me give you a few examples. So if you are an auditor and you are going into different companies, one of the first things you look at is accounting ratios because it tells you a lot about what's going on in a business. Another example is if you are an investor. So if you're looking at different companies and deciding which one to invest in, one of the things you will do is you will compare these companies based off their accounting ratios. And a third example is if you are running an organization. So if you are a CEO, one of the things you will do is you will gauge your performance based on your accounting ratios and you will watch how they change over time. So there are many different ways that accounting ratios can help you make better business decisions. Let's start off by explaining what is a ratio. A ratio is a comparison of two different numbers with a meaningful relationship. So there are two parts to this. There is a calculation and then there is the meaning. So there are hundreds of different accounting ratios. We're not going to go through all of them. But what I want to do here is just give you a taste of how ratios work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk through three key accounting ratios you should know. The three ratios we're going to talk about are profit margin, asset turnover, and financial leverage. Profit margin is net income divided by sales. This is your measure of profitability or how much profit you are making off every sale. So let's imagine you are selling shirts. If you sell a shirt for $100 and it costs you $50 to make, your net income is $50. So net income divided by sales is 50 divided by 100, which equals 50% or 50 cents on the dollar. So for every dollar of sales you generate, 50 cents turns into profit. Typically you're looking at a whole business. So $1 million in sales would generate $500,000 in profit. This also tells you that if your sales doubled to $2 million, all things being equal, your profit would be $1 million or 50%. So what does this mean? Profit margin tells you whether you're in a low margin business or a high margin business. This understanding drives your operational decisions. So let me give you an example of this. In a low margin business, the way you make money is you make a small amount of profit off of every sale. So this small amount of profit is okay as long as you're making lots and lots of sales because that small amount adds up to a lot of money over time. Now in a high margin business, you're making a large amount of profit off of every single sale. So you don't have to make as many sales to make a lot of money. It's important to realize that one approach is not necessarily better than the other. It's just helpful to get an understanding of what business you're in because that drives your business decisions. Next is asset turnover. Asset turnover is sales divided by assets. So let's go back to the shirt example. Let us imagine you make $1 million in sales and your business has assets that are worth $250,000. Your asset turnover is four to one or simply four. This is sometimes referred to as four turns per year. You are taking your resources and turning them into sales four times each year. So what does this mean? This is basically telling you how much you've sold. So if you look at sales just by itself, it can be misleading. Let's say you've made $1 million in sales. Well, $1 million sounds like a lot of money, but it can mean very different things if you're selling automobiles versus if you're selling paper clips. 
that $1 million in sales is two very different things. By comparing sales against assets, it gives you a much better understanding of how much you've actually sold. Asset turnover is very useful to understand in relation to profit margin. So if you have small profit margins, you better have a high asset turnover. But if you have high profit margins, you can afford to have a lower asset turnover. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, wouldn't the best outcome be to have high profit margins and high asset turnover? Well, that's a good idea, but that's not typically how the real world works. Usually, profit margin and asset turnover move in opposite directions because of the forces of economics. We have talked before about supply and demand, and what supply and demand teaches us is that one of the easiest ways to increase the number of items you sell is to drop your sales price. As you drop your sales price, demand increases, which means the quantity you sell increases. But as you drop your sales price, that means your profit margins are decreasing, even though your asset turns are increasing. Now let us talk about financial leverage, which is assets divided by owner's equity. This looks at how a company is being financed. We all know the famous balance sheet equation, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. This equation is looking at how your balance sheet is divided between liabilities and equity, or how much debt does your company hold? Is your company a high debt holder or a low debt holder? There's pros and cons to both approaches. So for example, if your company had $250,000 in assets and $125,000 was from shareholder investment, your financial leverage is two. This means for every $1 invested in the business, there are $2 worth of assets. In other words, investors are leveraging their money by doubling their investment based on the creditworthiness of the business. You can also look at it the other way and say that investors only have a claim to half the assets in a business and debtors have a claim to the other half. So what does this mean? Let me give you a very practical example of how financial leverage can impact your operations. So let's imagine the example of a company that goes through a leveraged buyout. And this is a fairly common thing that happens in business where a group of investors will come in and buy a company using a lot of debt. Before the sale, the company has low debt and high equity. After the sale, the company is financed differently and has high debt and low equity. In this situation, your financial leverage ratio changes significantly in one day. And what you're going to notice is that dramatically impacts your operations. So your operations are suddenly going to become focused on making those debt payments. It's important to understand that one financial leverage ratio is not necessarily better than another, and that there's pros and cons to both approaches. These ratios are just useful for providing understanding about what's going on in your business. I hope you enjoyed this discussion on accounting ratios, and I'm gonna leave you on a little bit of a cliffhanger because Next week, I'm going to talk about what I feel is the most important accounting ratio. We didn't get to it this week because I wanted to dedicate an entire video to this ratio. So I know you're gonna be in suspense, but you're going to have to wait until next week. If there's an accounting ratio that's your favorite that I haven't talked about, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. And if you like this video, if you found it helpful, click on the subscribe button. The best way to supercharge a business is through accounting and corporate finance, and I release a new video every week. So come back and check out next week's video.